It's Mark here from Smart ASMR, and today I'll be doing my week 11 recap video for the NFL, and my week 12 picks as well, so I hope you enjoy the video. In the Thursday night game, the Seahawks defeated the Cardinals 28-21. to Seattle is now 7-3. And the Cardinals are now 6-4. and four. In this game, the Seahawks are up 16-7 at half. And that was after a 46-yard pass interference call, which resulted in a 27-yard field goal by Jason Myers. In this game, the Cardinals never led all game. In the fourth quarter, it was... 23 to 21. The Seahawks are up by two. The Cardinals got the ball back, but then they got an intentional grounding call against them, followed by a holding call, which happened in the end zone. So Seattle was rewarded two points, and that made the game 25 to 21 at that point. Then after that, Jason Myers ended up making a 41-yard field goal, which made the game 28-21. And then the Cardinals ended up driving down the field to Seattle's 27-yard line, but then Kyler Murray was sacked on 4th and 10, so that gave the Seahawks the ball back, which ended any chance for the Cardinals to get a touchdown at the end of the game. For the Cardinals stats, Kyler Murray was 29 of 42 for 269 yards. He had two touchdowns and zero interceptions. Kenyon Drake had 11 carries for 29 yards and a touchdown and four catches for 31 yards. Larry Fitzgerald had 8 catches for 62 yards. DeAndre Hopkins had 5 catches for 51 yards. Christian Kirk had 4 catches for 50 yards. Chase Edmonds had 4 catches for 36 yards and a touchdown, along with 2 carries for 13 yards. And Dan Arnold had a 4-yard touchdown catch. For the Seahawks, Russell Wilson went 23 of 28 for 197 yards. He had two touchdowns and zero interceptions. He also had 10 carries for 42 yards. Carlos Hyde had 14 carries for 79 yards and a touchdown. He played the role really well, filling in for Chris Carson. Tyler Lockett had 9 catches for 67 yards and a touchdown. DK Metcalf had 3 catches for 46 yards and a touchdown. His touchdown was the first one of the game. Greg Olson had 2 catches for 20 yards. He ended up leaving with a non-contact injury. It was a fascia injury. So hopefully his foot's okay. They're fearing that it's most likely ruptured, which would end his season. For the Seahawks, Carlos Dunlap had two sacks, and LJ Collier had one sack. The next game we're going to talk about is the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Steelers ended up defeating the Jaguars 27-3. The Steelers are now 10-0 on the season whereas the Jaguars fell to 1-9. and nine. In this game, the Jags actually scored first. They were up 3-0 after a field goal, and they tried an onside kick with Keelan Cole, but the Steelers ended up recovering, and they weren't fooled. The Steelers then missed a field goal after that, and then finally in the second quarter, they started to find their rhythm. He scored 27 unanswered points to finish the game, and it was
Bucks, the Steelers up 17-3 at the half. For the Steelers stats, Ben Roethlisberger went 32-46 for 267 yards. He had two touchdowns and one interception. James Conner had 13 carries for 89 yards. Benny Snell had 7 carries for 15 yards and a touchdown. Deontay Johnson had 12 catches for 111 yards. Chase Claypool had 4 catches for 59 yards and a touchdown. I believe he has 10 touchdowns now. And he's just a rookie, so that's an amazing feat. Eric Ebron had 4 catches for 36 yards and a touchdown. And for the Steelers defense, Minka Fitzpatrick and Terrell Edmonds each had 2 interceptions. For the Jaguars stats, Jake Luton went 16 of 37 for 151 yards. He had 0 touchdowns and 4 interceptions. So not a good game for him at all. James Robinson continues to impress in his rookie season. In this game he had 17 carries for 73 yards. And 2 catches for 21 yards. He's the fastest rookie undrafted free agent. To reach over 1,000 scrimmage yards. And he's the 5th ever to do this feat. The Jaguars' leading receiver was DJ Chark. He had four catches for 41 yards. Up next, we'll be talking about the Detroit Lions at the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers ended up defeating the Lions 20 to nothing. This was a pretty big upset because not a lot of people picked the Panthers to beat the Lions with all the injuries they had. And with B.J. Walker starting for the first time at quarterback. The Panthers are now 4-7 on the season. And the Lions fell to 4-6. The Panthers held a 7-0 lead at halftime. And rolled on to a 20-0 victory. The Lions got shut out for the first time. I believe since 2009. They could have prevented the shutout had Matt Brader not missed a field goal in the game that they attempted, but it was still a ugly loss for the Lions. In this game, the Lions are missing DeAndre Swift due to a concussion, and Kenny Galladay was out again. And for the Panthers, they were missing Daddy Bridgewater with his knee injury. I think he'll be back for the game this week against the Vikings. And then Christian McCaffrey was out again with his shoulder injury. For the Lions stats, Matthew Stafford went 18 of 33 for 178 yards. He had zero touchdowns and zero interceptions. Adrian Peterson had seven carries for 18 yards. T.J. Hawkinson had four catches for 68 yards. Marvin Jones Jr. had four catches for 51 yards. For the Lions defense, Amani or Warrie and Desmond Trufant had interceptions in the end zone. For the Panther stats, former XFL star P.J. Walker was making his first NFL start. He had a pretty Decent showing overall, besides a couple of mistakes, but he went 24 for 34 for 258 yards. He had one touchdown and two interceptions. Mike Davis had 19 carries for 64 yards and a touchdown. DJ Moore had seven catches for 127 yards. Curtis Samuel continues to ball out these past few weeks. He had 8 catches for 70 yards and a touchdown. And Brian Burns had 2 sacks for the defense. The team had 5 total sacks in the game. Now we'll be talking about the New England Patriots versus the Houston Texans. This was another game that ended up in an upset. The Texans ended up defeating the Patriots 
27 to 20. The Texans are now 3 and 7 on the season, and the Patriots fall to 4 and 6. The Texans are up 21 to 10 at halftime, and they never lost the lead from there in the game. The Texans ended up stopping the Patriots when they were driving down the field late in the game, where they could have tied the game. The Patriots had a 4th and 4 at the Texans' 24-yard line and failed to convert it. And then, that was with 1 minute 18 seconds left. They ended up getting the ball back again, but it was only with 9 seconds left. And on the last play of the game, Cam Newton threw a 50-yard Hail Mary pass, which Ryan Izzo caught, but they ended up running out of time, so that was the end of the game. The Texans just had to make sure they prevented a big play in the end zone. For the Patriots stats, Cam Newton went 26 of 40 for 365 yards. He had one touchdown and zero interceptions. Damian Harris had 11 carries for 43 yards and a touchdown. Demir Bird had six catches for 132 yards and a touchdown. James White had six catches for 64 yards. And Ryan Izzo had two catches for 59 yards. For the Texan stats, Deshaun Watson went 28 of 37 for 344 yards. He had two touchdowns and zero interceptions. He also had six carries for 36 yards and a touchdown. So he played phenomenally. Brandon Cooks had four catches for 85 yards. Jordan Aikens had five catches for 83 yards. Will Fuller had six catches for 80 yards. Kiki Kuti had two catches for 10 yards and a touchdown. And Randall Cobb had two catches for seven yards and a touchdown. Next up, we'll be talking about the Tennessee Titans versus the Baltimore Ravens. The Titans ended up defeating the Ravens 30-24 to in an overtime thriller. The Titans are now 7-3 and on the season, and the Ravens are now 6-4. and The Ravens have lost two straight games in three of their last four, so they're heading in a bad direction right now. And they're playing the Steelers this Sunday, so it doesn't get any easier for them. The Ravens did have a 21-10 lead in the third quarter after a Mark Andrews 31-yard touchdown catch. But then A.J. Brown had a 14-yard touchdown catch where he bulldozed through a bunch of Ravens defenders and wouldn't be denied the end zone. And then Ryan Tannehill ran in the two-point conversion, which put the Titans up 24-20. to with 2 minutes and 18 seconds left in the game. The Ravens then drove down the field and kicked a 29-yard field goal by Justin Tucker to tie the game and send it into overtime. Then in overtime, Derrick Henry scored the game-winning touchdown with a 29-yarder with 5 minutes and 21 seconds left in overtime to give the Titans a thrilling victory. The Titans stats, Ryan Tannehill went 22 of 31 for 259 yards. He had two touchdowns and one interception, and he had four carries for 35 yards. Derrick Henry had 28 carries for 133 yards and a touchdown. In the first three quarters, he only had 44 yards on 18 carries, so the Ravens did a good job against them for those quarters. But then, he had 89 yards in the fourth quarter and overtime combined. He just seems to get better and better throughout the game, and he slowly wears on defenses. He now has 1,079 yards on the season, 
which puts him back in the rushing lead. He has 10 more yards than Dalvin Cook at the moment. Corey Davis had 5 catches for 113 yards. A.J. Brown had 4 catches for 62 yards and a touchdown. Johnny Smith had 4 catches for 20 yards and a touchdown. And Steven Guskowski went 3 for 3 on his field goals. For the Ravens stats, Lamar Jackson went 17 of 29 for 186 yards. He had 1 touchdown and 1 interception. He also had 13 carries for 51 yards. Rookie J.K. Dobbins had 15 carries for 70 yards and a touchdown. Mark Andrews had 5 catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. And Justin Tucker went 3 for 3 on his field goals as well. Up next we'll be talking about the Philadelphia Eagles against the Cleveland Browns. The Browns ended up defeating the Eagles 22-17. The Browns are now 7-3 on this season, and the Eagles are 3-6-1. This was uh, another game for the Browns where it was raining. The Eagles never held the lead in this game all game. In the first series, Zion Takitaki had a 50-yard interception return for the first score of the game. Oliver Vernon also had a safety against the Eagles right before the half, which made the score 12-7 with the Browns' lead. And then in, in this game, Nick Chubb had a really cool 54-yard run where he had a beautiful stiff arm on a player where he ended up going down the field in beast mode and almost made it in the end zone but the guy he stiff armed ended up getting up and making the tackle on him but in the end Cremont ended up scoring on that drive for the Eagles stats Carson Wentz went 21 of 35 for 235 yards. He had two touchdowns and two interceptions. Miles Sanders had 16 carries for 66 yards. Dallas Goddard had five catches for 77 yards and a touchdown. Jalen Rieger had four catches for 52 yards. And Richard Rodgers had two catches for 48 yards and a touchdown. For the Browns stats, Baker Mayfield went 12 of 22 for 204 yards. He had zero touchdowns and zero interceptions. Nick Chubb had 20 carries for 114 yards. Cremont had 13 carries for 11 yards and a touchdown. Kadero Lodge had three catches for 73 yards. Richard Higgins had three catches for 65 yards. For the Browns defense, they played exceptionally well. Oliver Vernon had three sacks, including the safety. The team had five total sacks in the game. And Denzel Ward and Sion Takitaki both had interceptions. Now we'll be talking about the Atlanta Falcons versus the uh, New Orleans Saints. The Saints ended up defeating the Falcons 24-9. The Saints are now 8-2 on the season, and they're leading the NFC race for the playoffs for that first round bye. And the Falcons fall to 3-7 on the season. Falcons actually had a 9-3 lead in the game. They're off three Youngway Koo field goals of 28 yards, 51 yards, and 52 yards. And then the Saints scored 21 unanswered points after that for a dominant win where they really took control at that point. For the Falcons stats, Matt Ryan was 19 of 37 for 232 yards. He had zero touchdowns and two interceptions. 
Todd Gurley had eight carries for 26 yards. Calvin Ridley had five catches for 90 yards. Russell Gage had seven catches for 58 yards. Julio Jones had two catches for 39 yards. He ended up leaving the game early in the second quarter due to his ongoing hamstring injury. For the Saints, they decided to roll with Taysom Hill over Jameis Winston. And it looked like it paid off in this game. Taysom Hill went 18 of 23 for 233 yards. He had zero touchdowns and zero interceptions. But he had 10 carries for 49 yards and two touchdowns as well. He really brings excitement to the Saints offense and the team as a whole. So it was fun to see him out there in his first start and his first victory as a starter. Latavius Murray had 12 carries for 49 yards and two catches for 36 yards. Alvin Kamara had 13 carries for 45 yards and a touchdown. Michael Thomas had 9 catches for 104 yards. He was by far Taysom Hill's favorite target of the game. Emmanuel Sanders had 4 catches for 66 yards. The Saints defense was really dominant. They had 8 sacks in the game. One by Demario Davis. Two by David Onyemata. Two by Trey Hendrickson. And three by Cam Jordan. And Janoris Jenkins and Marcus Williams both had interceptions in the game. Now we'll be talking about the Cincinnati Bengals at the Washington football team. Washington ended up getting the victory 20-9. Washington's now 3-7 and seven, and in the thick of the NFC East race. The Bengals are now 2-7-1. and, seven and one. The Bengals were up 9-7 at halftime. And then Washington scored 13 unanswered points to win the game. For the Bengals stats, Joe Burrow went 22-34 of 34 for 203 yards. He had one touchdown and zero interceptions. Unfortunately for him and the team, he ended up getting injured in the third quarter, and it was confirmed he tore his ACL and MCL, and also had more structural damage in his knee. So, prayers out to him for a speedy recovery, because no one wants to see that for any player. Ryan Finley ended up taking over in the game, and he only went 3 for 10 for 30 yards, and he had 0 touchdowns and 1 interception, and he also had a 19-yard run. Samaji P. Ryan had 5 carries for 19 yards. Tyler Boyd had 9 catches for 85 yards. A.J. Green had four catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. This was his first touchdown since October of 2018. Randy Bullock didn't have the best game. He went one for three on field goals. He made a 53-yard field goal, though. For the football team, Alex Smith went 17 of 25 for 166 yards. He had one touchdown and one interception. This was his first win as a starter in 742 days. So congrats to him. Antonio Gibson had 16 carries for 94 yards and a touchdown. Terry McLaurin had five catches for 84 yards. Steven Sims Jr. had three catches for 13 yards and a touchdown. And Dustin Hopkins went two for three on field goals and had a long of 50 yards. Up next, we'll be talking about the New York Jets at the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers ended up defeating the Jets 34-28. The 
Chargers are now 3-7 and seven on the season, and the Jets fall to 0-10. Oh In the first series of this game, Henry Anderson blocked a Chargers punt, and Quinn Williams recovered, and Michael P. Ryan had a 5-yard touchdown, but the extra point was missed by Sam Ficken, so the Jets had a 6-0 lead. Then the Chargers really took control of the game, as they usually have a good first half in games. They're up 31 of 13, with 5.33 left in the third quarter, and then they've been known to struggle to hold the lead late in the game. And this game was no exception. The Jets scored 13 points, whereas the Chargers scored 3. getting two more points on safety at the end when the Chargers punter Ty Long was told to run in the back of the end zone so that way they could secure the win and run out the clock so they were willing to give up two points at that point. The Jets actually were down by eight late in the game and drove all the way to the Chargers 32 yard line with under a minute left, but then they ended up turning the ball over on downs, which ended up in that sequence with the safety at the end. For the Jets' stats, Joe Flacco went 15 of 30 for 205 yards. He had two touchdowns and one interception. Frank Gore had 15 carries for 61 yards and a touchdown. Michael P. Ryan had 8 carries for 33 yards and a touchdown. Denzel Mims had 3 catches for 71 yards. Brashad Perryman had 2 catches for 54 yards and a touchdown. And Chris Herndon had 2 catches for 32 yards and a touchdown. For the Chargers stats, Justin Herbert went 37 of 49 for 366 yards. He had three touchdowns and zero interceptions, so he had another amazing game. Kalen Balaj had 16 carries for 44 yards. Keenan Allen had 16 catches for 145 yards and a touchdown, so he really balled out. Mike Williams had four catches for 72 yards and a touchdown. Tyron Johnson had a 54-yard catch. He's usually their deep threat receiver. And Andre Henry had four catches for 48 yards and a touchdown. Next up, we'll be talking about the Miami Dolphins at the Denver Broncos. This was a, another upset game. The Broncos ended up defeating the Dolphins 20-13. Broncos are now four and six on the season, and the Dolphins are six and four. The Broncos are up twenty to ten at the end of the third quarter, and the only points scored in the fourth was a fifty-three yard field goal made by Jason Sanders of the Dolphins. The Dolphins actually were at the fifteen yard line of the Broncos with a little over a minute left. This was after Tua was benched for Ryan Fitzpatrick. But Fitz ended up throwing an interception in the end zone to Justin Simmons, which basically secured the win for the Broncos. For the Dolphin stats, Tua Tungvaloa was 11 of 20 for 83 yards. He had one touchdown pass and zero interceptions, and he ended up getting benched in the fourth quarter due to poor performance. And Ryan Fitzpatrick came in to relieve him. He was 12 of 18 for 117 yards, with zero touchdowns and one interception. Salvan Ahmed had 12 carries for 43 yards. Devontae Parker had six catches for 61 yards and a touchdown. 
Mike Kosicki had four catches for 43 yards. For the Broncos, Drew Locke was 18 of 30 for 270 yards. He had zero touchdowns and one interception. He also had two carries for 23 yards. Melvin Gordon had 15 carries for 84 yards and two touchdowns. He also lost a fumble near the goal line when he could have again scored, but he had a good game overall. Philip Lindsay also had a good game. He had 16 carries for 82 yards. Tim Patrick had 5 catches for 119 yards. Noah Fant had 4 catches for 55 yards. And the Broncos defense played stellar. They had 6 stacks. 2 were by Deshaun Williams. And Justin Simmons had that interception, like I said, at the end of the game. Now we'll be talking about the Dallas Cowboys versus the Minnesota Vikings. The Cowboys ended up pulling an upset victory over the Vikings, 31-28. The Cowboys are now 3-7 on the season, and the Vikings are 4-6. So that NFC East is looking crazy now. All four teams have three wins in it currently. So it's anyone's division. In this game, the Vikings lost two fumbles. And the Cowboys had one turnover, so the Vikings lost the turnover battle. The Cowboys were up 16-7 at the half. And then the Vikings took a 21-16 lead at the beginning of the fourth. Then both teams traded touchdowns. And the Cowboys got the last score with 1 minute and 37 seconds left on a 2 yard touchdown pass to Dalton Schultz. There are also two really good catches in this game. One was by Adam Thielen. He got another one hand catch in the corner of the end zone. And CeeDee Lamb had a catch where he was draped over by a defender and had to make a crazy adjustment to extend his arms out and make a insane catch. For the Cowboys, Andy Dalton was 22 of 32 for 203 yards. He had three touchdowns and one interception. He had a really good game. Ezekiel Elliott had 21 carries for 103 yards. And two catches for 11 yards and a touchdown. It's good to see production from him again. Because my fantasy team really needs it. Tony Pollard had five carries for 60 yards and a touchdown. He had a 42-yard touchdown in the game. Amari Cooper had six catches for 81 yards. CeeDee Lamb had four catches for 34 yards and a touchdown. And Dalton Schultz had four catches for 25 yards and a touchdown. For the Viking stats, Kirk Cousins had a good game. He went 22 of 30 for 314 yards. He had three touchdowns and zero interceptions. Dalvin Cook had 27 carries for 115 yards and a touchdown. And five catches for 45 yards. Adam Thielen had 8 catches for 123 yards and 2 touchdowns. Justin Jefferson had 3 catches for 86 yards and a touchdown. Next up, we'll be talking about the Green Bay Packers at the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts ended up defeating the Packers 34-31 in overtime. The Colts are now 7-3. And the Packers are 7-3 and three as well. Both are currently leading their divisions. Green Bay had four turnovers in this game. And the Colts had two. The Colts had a lot of penalties in this game though. They had eight penalties that were accepted for 116 yards. The Packers are up 28-14 at the half after 
Jamal Williams' four-yard touchdown catch to close the first half. The Colts then scored 17 points in the second half, with the Packers only scoring three on a field goal at the end of the game to tie it and send it into overtime. They kicked a 26-yard field goal made by Crosby with three seconds left in the game. In overtime, Marquez Valdez Scantling fumbled the ball when he was stripped by Julian Blackman and it was recovered by DeForest Buckner and then Rodrigo Blankenship ended up kicking the game winning field goal in overtime. It was a 39 yarder. For the Packers stats, Aaron Rodgers went 27 of 38 for 311 yards. He had three touchdowns and one interception. Aaron Jones had 10 carries for 41 yards and a touchdown and 4 catches for 30 yards. Devontae Adams had 7 catches for 106 yards and a touchdown. Marquez Valdez-Scantling had 3 catches for 55 yards and he lost that fumble in the game as well. Robert Tanyan had five catches for 44 yards and a touchdown. And Jamal Williams had a four-yard touchdown catch. Phillip Rivers went 24 of 36 for 288 yards. He had three touchdowns and one interception. Jonathan Taylor had 22 carries for 90 yards. Michael Pittman Jr. had three catches for 66 yards and a touchdown. It was his first NFL touchdown, and it was a 45-yard touchdown. Zach Pascal had three catches for 54 yards. Trey Burton had two catches for 25 yards and a touchdown. Jack Doyle had a six-yard touchdown catch. And Colts kicker Rodrigo Blankenship was a four for five on field goals, including that game-winning 39-yarder in overtime. The next game we'll be talking about is the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Las Vegas Raiders. The Chiefs ended up pulling out the victory 35-31. to I'm going to call this my game of the week. I thought it was really entertaining to watch throughout the entire game. The Chiefs are now 9-1 and on the season. And the Raiders are 6-4. The Raiders took a 31-28 lead in the game from a Jason Witten one-yard touchdown catch with 143 left in the game. But they gave Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense too much time to come back and score down the field. They ended up scoring 1 minute and 15 seconds later. Travis Kelsey 22 yard touchdown catch with 28 seconds left in the game and then the Raiders got the ball back and Derek Carr threw an interception to Daniel Sorensen at the end for the Chiefs stats Patrick Mahomes went 34 45 for 348 yards he had two touchdowns and one interception Clyde Edwards Hilaire had 14 carries for 69 yards and two touchdowns. Le'Veon Bell had his first touchdown as a Chief. He had seven carries for 25 yards and a touchdown. Travis Kelsey had eight catches for 127 yards and a touchdown. Tyree Kill had 11 catches for 102 yards and a touchdown. For the Raiders, Derek Carr went 23 of 31 for 275 yards. He had three touchdowns and one interception. Josh Jacobs had 17 carries for 55 yards and a touchdown. Darren Waller had seven catches for 88 yards and a touchdown. Nelson Aguilar had six catches for 88 yards and a touchdown. And Jason Witten had a one-yard touchdown catch. 
for the last game of week 11, the Monday night game, the Los Angeles Rams versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Rams ended up defeating the Bucks 27 to 24. The Rams are now 7 and 3 on the season and the Bucks are now 7 and 4. The Rams are up 17 to 14 at the half and took a 27 to 24 lead with 2 minutes and 36 seconds left on a Matt Gay 40-yard field goal. And then Tom Brady had a chance to drive the Bucks down the field, but he threw an interception to Jordan Fuller on the last drive of the game. For the Rams stats, Jared Goff went 39 of 51 for 376 yards. He had three touchdowns and two interceptions. Malcolm Brown had three carries for 20 yards. Cooper Cup had 11 catches for 145 yards. And Robert Woods had 12 catches for 130 yards and a touchdown. So those two receivers played extremely well. Van Jefferson had a 7-yard touchdown catch. And Cam Akers had a 4-yard touchdown catch. This was their first NFL touchdowns. Cam Akers is only 21 years old. And Van Jefferson is 24 years old. Jordan Fuller for the Rams defense had 2 interceptions. Samson Ebukam had a sack. For the Bucks stats, Tom Brady went 26 of 48 for 216 yards. He had two touchdowns and two interceptions. Ronald Jones had 10 carries for 24 yards. Leonard Fournette had 7 carries for 17 yards and a touchdown. Antonio Brown had 8 catches for 57 yards. Chris Godwin had 7 catches for 53 yards and a touchdown. Mike Evans had 5 catches for 49 yards and a touchdown. And for the Bucks defense, Jordan Whitehead and Jason Pierre-Paul had interceptions. Alright, let's get to the NFL Week 12 picks. There's some good games coming up this week. Thanksgiving game, the Houston Texans at the Detroit Lions. I'm going to have to go with the Texans in this game. The Lions haven't given me a ton of confidence to pick them, especially with Kenny Galladay being injured and DeAndre Swift is questionable to play. I just think Deshaun Watson can get it done with this offense off the Lions, especially after their performance last week. I can't confidently pick the Lions, so that's why I'm going with the Texans. The second and last game for Thanksgiving is the Washington football team at the Dallas Cowboys. This should be a good divisional game. In this game, I'm picking the Cowboys to pull off the victory. They seemed to have a spark infusing them when they played the Vikings. And I expect them to build off that and get the victory over Washington. The Los Angeles Chargers at the Buffalo Bills. I'm going to go with the Bills in this game. I think they're too good to lose this game. I do like the Chargers offense a lot, but they can't seem to hold their lead in the second half, and I think the Bills can take advantage of their defense, especially in the second half. The Tennessee Titans at the Indianapolis Colts just seem like these two teams played, didn't they? Well, this is their second time in three weeks playing because they played each other in week 10 as well on the Thursday night game. The Colts ended up winning that game, but this time I'm going with the Titans in this 
game. I think last time the special teams blunders made a big difference for the Titans, where they ended up losing. I really like how the Colts have been playing this season. They've got a really good defense, and their offense is great as well. But I just think the Titans will pull off the victory and split the games between these two. The Carolina Panthers at the Minnesota Vikings. This was a tricky game to pick, but I'm going to go with the Vikings in this game. The Panthers looked pretty good last game, and they're getting Teddy Bridgewater back. And he'll be playing against his old team, which makes this game really intriguing. But I'm just going to have to go with the Vikings because I think Dalvin Cook and Kirk Cousins will get the job done. The Cleveland Browns at the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to go with the Browns in this game. I think the Browns have had a pretty soft schedule lately, but they've been playing exceptionally well in all these games, and I think they'll take advantage of that soft schedule and pull out another victory and go 8-3 on the season. The New York Giants at the Cincinnati Bengals. Giants in this game. The Bengals are just too banged up at the quarterback position with Joe Burrow getting his season-ending knee injury. They're going to be starting Brandon Allen at quarterback, but I think the Giants have a really good defense, and I think they'll roll to their fourth victory of the year. Arizona Cardinals at the New England Patriots. This was kind of a tough game for me to pick too, but I picked the Cardinals because the Cardinals are in the thick of things in the NFC West, and I feel like this is a must-win game for them to keep up in the division. The Dolphins at the Jets going with the Dolphins in this game. I think this will be a get-right game for the Dolphins after their loss last week. The Raiders at the Falcons. I'm going to go with the Raiders because they have more to play for this season. And the Falcons have been on and off with Leo Jones. He's such a big difference maker. But if his hamstring isn't healed, it's tough for them to really get their offense going. Besides with Calvin Ridley. The Ravens at the Steelers. Classic AFC North battle. This game was originally supposed to be played on Thursday night. But due to the positive COVID tests for the Ravens. They got switched to Sunday starting at 12.15. I'm going to go with the Steelers in this game. I think they're looking well balanced on offense and defense, like I always say. And the Ravens have lost three of their last four I just don't see them beating the Steelers, especially with all the COVID distractions this week. The Saints at the Broncos. This does kind of smell like a trap game for the Saints, because the Broncos' defense can be on, as we saw last game versus the Dolphins. But I'm going to go with the Saints in this game. I think they're really well coached and their defense is good as well. And Taylor.
season 